All right, um, I'm going to talk about comparisons, this notion of the comparison of adjectives. It's not a very transparent subject name, okay? But um, we're going to talk about the general concept and then the three ways in which we compare adjectives in English, which are exactly reflected in, in Greek. We're going to only talk about, in this video, about two of them. And the third way we'll talk about in another video. Oh, you're, you're falling out Sorry. of the thick thing here. Okay, I'm taking too much room. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, comparison of adjectives. What we're talking about is um, the, in general, any adjective. There, are, there are three forms of it. So there's a neutral form like um, happy. Um, there's one in which, which is absolute in its way, a happy person. Um, and then there's a one in which involves comparison, where you say uh, a happier person, someone who's happier than another person. Okay, so you are you're invoking a pair of things and making a comparison. Mm -hmm. um, so so the term comparison of adjectives seems to apply to that form. Okay, but the third form, which is not comparable to the other two, is happiest, which is incomparable. Right, is a kind of absolute. In its way, right? There's nothing more happy than the happiest, okay, person. So um, we have we have uh, um, the, the essential um, notion is that in some form, in the, the positive degree, the word is what we call the form happy. Um, the comparative degree is what we call happier, and the happiest is called the superlative. So positive which is one the base form, comparative, and superlative. So, you know, we, we can do this, we can, we can say uh, um, happier and happiest as well as happy, or you can say ha happy and, um, and pretty happy and very happy, mm -hmm. okay? You can do it that way in English. Or you can say happy, more happy, and most happy. Mm -hmm. Right, so there are ways in which you can express these degrees of an adjective, and I think that's a, probably a better way of talking about it, the, the degrees of, of the adjective um, in English with adverbs like more and most, or, or pretty and very, okay? Um, you can do it that way, but as well as doing forms with suffixes. Now, the example we've given you of very is, is a... Um, one one example, but if you look at and it's typical of of the way you do uh, the living way of doing comparison of adjectives in English. So, for example, there's the, if you take a new word like user friendly from the computer vocabulary, you you can do user friendlier. User friendly is a positive degree. User friendlier for the comparative and user friendliest. Or the superlative degree, or you could do very user friendly um, and pretty user friendly, or most and more user friendly. Okay, so you have these three ways of doing it. Um, those those forms are 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 those three forms are what you have in Greek as well. So you have adverbial ways of doing comparison um, and suffix suffix forms of doing comparison and. So the suffix forms like friendlier and friendliest. Um, well, we also have some that are or that are uh, irregular. Like if we take the word bad, what's the comparative of bad? Worse. And the superlative is worst. Okay, so we don't have any other examples that are like bad, worse, and worst. Okay, or we have good, better, and best. Okay, there's some similarities because you've got an st ending in the superlative. But what's happened to the IER or friendlier? So these are older ways, okay? They're weird ones, they're older ones, and, and they're, they tend to be in very common words like good and bad, right? Mm -hmm. um, big, bigger and biggest, they're okay, but it's sort of unpredictable in English and other languages. So in this video, we're going to talk about the, the adverbs that are used for comparison, like more more user-friendly and most user-friendly in Greek. And then we're going to talk about the the regular way of doing comparison. And then we'll do a separate video 
on the weird ones, on the older, the regular ones. Um, so we're, we're talking about the material on pages 492 and 493 of the book, um, hopefully in a more lucid manner. So here's the way you do comparative comparison of adjectives um, with adverbs like more and most or pretty and very. Okay, um, the word for more is malon, and the word for most is malasta. So you just stick those in front of the adjective, and they generally they they do always precede the adjective that they're um, applying to, and you've made a comparative and a superlative. So it works the same way as more and most do in English. Okay. Um, now let's look at the so-called regular way of doing comparison of adjectives. Um, and here are the suffixes. The first one, teros, masculine, terra, feminine, teron. Um, neuter is the comparative suffix, so that means more ha happier, okay, is analogous to happier. And then the second, datos, is a superlative suffix, that gives you the happiest one, tatos, tate, and taton. Um, the teros suffix, here's something really interesting, and the kind of, for me in any case, when I first learned it, illuminates the whole notion of what comparison is. In Greek and in the Neo European languages in general, the words for right and left have this teros suffix. So the word for right in Greek is dexiteros, and the word for left is kaioteros. Why, why? It doesn't mean more right or more left, but what it means is right as opposed to left, mm. right? So when you, the notion of teros is that there are two things in mind and you're stressing one is against another. Yeah. So it brings, brings comparison to mind. Anyhow, um, so those are the suffixes, and if you have a, an adjective of, of, the, of the type philos or, or uh, uh, dikaios or something like that, you're going to add those suffixes to the adjective. But there's a trick to it. And the trick is the little thing um, that Felicia has put at the bottom of the screen with an asterisk next to it. The vowel before the suffixes teros and tatos alternates between omicron and omega. So this is what's called a morphophonemic rule. It's a rule about the morphology that's based on the sound pattern of the word. And the sound pattern is is relates to the way to the rules of prosody. That is how you how you uh, make verse in ancient Greek. So the idea is you have the basic notion is that you have an omicron when um, the syllable before the the omicron is a heavy syllable or a stressed syllable or a long syllable. People do different terminology for this. And you have an omega when it's an unstressed syllable. So the idea is you don't have too many of these in a row. You don't have three short or unstressed syllables in a row. And you don't have uh, uh, two more long ones in a row. So so you, you ver your reason for the alternation in the omicron, between the omicron and the omega has to do with an aesthetic principle, if you want, that's built into the sound rules of the, and the morphology of the language. So here's the sound rule that determines whether you use an omicron or omega. If the syllable, this is, go through this with us slowly, if the syllable, one of them, if the syllable before the os suffix of the positive degree, okay, so we're talking about in the case of, say, dikaios, the syllable before the, the os is chi, or i, however you prefer to define the syllable. So if the syllable before the os suffix of the positive degree of the adjective consists of a long vowel, okay, those are eta and omega, and long alpha and long iota and long upsilon in Greek, okay, you want to know what they are, or a diphthong, if that's the case in dikaios, because it's alpha iota is a diphthong, that is two vowels that are part of one syllable, right, pronounced together. Or it consists of a short vowel followed by two or more consonants. Okay, um, what happens is that this produces a heavy syllable or a stressed syllable in Greek when you have two consonants after. A, so you, you're closing the syllable and then with one consonant and starting the next one. Okay, it changes the the stress pattern and the sound pattern in the word. So a long vowel or a diphthong, or a short vowel, vowel followed by two or more consonants. Okay, or a double consonant. And the double consonants are xi 
zeta and psi. These are just ways of writing uh, sounds that could be written with two other letters. So they consist of two consonants. It's really the same thing. So if the syllable before the os contains a long vowel or a diphthong or a short vowel followed by two or more consonants or a double consonant, then you have an omicron before the comparative with superlative suffix. Otherwise, you have an, an omega. Okay, So we just state that rule in this way. Um, and, and you've got to meet these, one of these, if you meet one of these three conditions, then you have a, an omicron, otherwise you have an omega. Um, there's one tricky part of this rule, okay, that is, how do you tell if a given vowel is short or long? Well, we know that um, eta is a long vowel and omega is a short vowel. And we also know that omicron and, I mean, oh, eta and omega are long vowels. Mm -hmm. We also know that omicron and epsilon are short vowels, so with them it's okay. But in the case of alpha, mm -hmm. iota, and upsilon, some texts mark them as long, like our, our grammar text marks long alphas and iotas and upsilons. When we start learning real Greek, there's no macrons over them to mark them. So what do you do? Well, if you think about this rule, um, there's a, the, you, if you've got two consonants or a double consonant after it, you're done. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you have only uh, uh, one consonant after it, you have to try and find out whether the vowel is long or short. Um, in, in practice, what we're talking about is understanding how a pattern works and why it doesn't, not about you creating these forms. So I think we don't have to worry too much about it, but we want to understand what the rule is that determines the Omicron or Omega, so you won't be thrown by it when you see this alternation. So, so let's look at a couple of examples, okay? <clears throat> we talked about dikaios. Before the os, you have the alpha iota, which is a diphthong. So when you make the superlative comparative and superlatives of dikaios, you get dikaiotaros and dikaiotatos with an Omicron. If we look at axios, okay, um, the syllable before the os is i, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a short vowel. Our book would mark it as a long, we're not. So there you have an omega. So it, the comparative is axiotaros and superlative axiotatos. That's the rule, okay?